So we have defined this very important concept of an equilibrium point of a differential equation, x prime equals yada yada. And they are simply points at which x prime equals zero. Now, we said that figuring out these points, and once again, how do we find these points? We find these points by taking the vector field, setting it equal to zero, and then saying, what are the values of x that make x prime equal zero? Those are the equilibrium points. So this is very important, as I said, for doping out the lay of the land, especially in 1D equations, for reasons you'll see in a second. But it's also worth staring at this word in and of itself. Equilibrium point. Now, as you take science classes, you're going to hear the word equilibrium a lot. You're going to hear about chemical equilibrium. That you put a bunch of substances in a box and they go to chemical equilibrium. That's a scientific concept of equilibrium. You can ter talk about uh, an ecosystem being in equilibrium. You can talk about a thermodynamic reaction being in equilibrium. And in each case, that scientific concept of equilibrium corresponds to the mathematical concept of an equilibrium point in the differential equation describing the chemical equation or the differential equation describing the ecosystem. Equilibrium points of the differential equations are equilibrium states of the system, meaning nothing is changing. x prime equals zero. The system is in stasis. Okay, so we have defined the concept of an equilibrium point of a differential equation, and we looked at a couple of examples. And I want to remind you that in the logistic equation, for example, we had two equilibrium points, x equals zero and x equals k. But the change arrows around those equilibrium points had a very interesting property. Here, the change arrows were going away from the equilibrium point. For x equals k, the change arrows and the trajectory, therefore, are going toward the equilibrium point. And I'm now going to make a huge definition, there, which you're going to hear a lot of. There are two flavors of equilibrium point. The two flavors are called stable and unstable. And I'm going to define stable and unstable. An equilibrium point is stable if nearby points go toward the equilibrium point. So do we have an example of that here? Yes, we do. x equals k. And conversely, an EP is unstable if nearby points go away from it, go away from 
the equilibrium point. And do we have an example of that? Yes, we do. x equals 0. And by the way, if these are, we're thinking of these as populations, so we're only using non-negative values of x. But if we, for some reason, wish to look at negative values of x, then if you plug negative values of x into the vector field, you're going to get that. And so this is a perfect example of an unstable equilibrium point. The, the paradigm case that illustrates the two is the stable equilibrium is a ball in a bowl. And if you push it off a little bit this way, it comes back. And if you push it a little this way, it comes back. And so this is a stable, this ball here is in stable equilibrium, meaning s nearby points go back to it. On the other hand, a ball on the top of a hill, what do we want to say about that? Well, it is in equilibrium. The for sum of the forces equals zero. So the ball is in equilibrium, but the slightest little perturbation to the left or right means that that ball is going to roll far away. In other words, nearby points go away from the ball on the hill, and it is therefore an unstable equilibrium point. One small technical note. Uh, I said there are two kinds of equilibrium points, talking about 1D. There are two kinds of equilibrium points, stable and unstable. And that's basically true, but there is a technical, technical correction that I should make to make it entirely mathematically true. So I want to consider the vector field x prime equals x squared. And let's ask ourselves, what does that look like? Well, since it's 1D, we can make a vector field plot. And that is going to look like that. That is the function x squared. And this is the graph of x prime equals x squared. Now let's ask ourselves, what are the equilibrium points of the vector field x prime equals x squared? Where does the graph cross zero? And you see it crosses zero right there at x equals zero. So you might be tempted to say, well, there's an equilib this system has one equilibrium point, and that is at the point x equals zero. It's not technically true, because you'll remember from math that that's a quadratic equation, has a square in it. And that quadratic equations, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, Quadratic equations have two roots. So what are the two roots of y equals x squared? Well, the answer is it has two roots, both of them equal to 0. And so this vector field has two equilibrium points, both of them at 0. Now, you might ask, what are we gaining from this? And the answer is, we're gaining technical correctness. But there's a further point, which is very important, which is this. What is the character of the equilibrium point, or equilibrium points, at x equals 0? So let's make a vector field. Here's x, and let's ask what are the change arrows doing? Well, to the left of the equilibrium point, these change arrows are big, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're always positive 
because this is always greater than zero. Then at zero, they become zero. And then just to the right of zero, they're also positive. At first, very small, but then getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, what kind of equilibrium point is that? Is it a stable equilibrium point? No. Is it an unstable equilibrium point? Well, no. <laughs> the definition was a stable equilibrium point. If you perturb off the equilibrium point, it comes back. Now, this would do that. If you perturb to the left, it comes back to zero. But if you perturb it a little bit to the right, it goes off to plus infinity. So this is neither a stable nor an unstable. It's stable on the left, and it's unstable on the right. And so this is called a semi-stable equilibrium point. So what is a semi-stable equilibrium point? How can we think about this? Well, you remember the metaphor that we had for the stable equilibrium point. It was a ball in a bowl. And if you push this way, it came back. And if you push that way, it came back. And then the metaphor for the unstable equilibrium point was a ball on a hill. And no matter where you perturbed it, it went far away. So this is the classic stable, and this is the classic unstable. Well, if you want to make a metaphor for this semi-stable, it would look like this. A ball on a ridge where this slope is zero, but it's positive everywhere else. So the ball is coming in this way and going out that way. And a small perturbation to the left comes back to the equilibrium point, but a small perturbation to the right goes far away. There's a further point about these semi-stable equilibrium points, <clears throat> which is a reason actually why we don't really have to think about them very much. And that's this. Let's draw that vector field again. So here is x, and here is x prime, and the vector field is x prime equals x squared. <clears throat> and I asked the trick question, how many equilibrium points? And the answer was two, and they're both zero. But there's something I want you to notice about this. If we write this as x prime equals x squared, you see that this tangency here creates a very unstable situation. What if there was a tiny, tiny, tiny offset so that x prime equals x squared? Achoo! Let's go back to tiny, <laughs> tiny offset. <laughs> There's a tiny, tiny offset so that x squared, x prime equals x squared plus 0. 0.00001. What does that look like? Well, that is going to look like this where this distance is 0. 0.00001, but mathematically, it misses that x-axis, misses x equals zero altogether. And consequently, now when I say, how many equilibrium points does this system have? The answer is none. And that fact is not changed by a tiny, tiny, tiny perturbation. Now let's consider another tiny perturbation. And let's think about the vector field x prime equals x squared 
minus 0. 0.00001. What does that look like? Well, that looks like this. And now if I ask you how many equilibrium points does this system have, the answer is 2. And you see why the answer to the first question was 2, but they're both 0. As that blue curve comes up and up and up, the two equilibrium points get closer and closer and closer to each other until they coincide exactly at that point of tangency. So here's the point. Tiny little difference, no equilibrium point. Another tiny little difference, two equilibrium points. So this vector field, x prime equals x squared, is not stable under tiny little perturbations. It is not what we call robust. And any model of a physical process, we have a kind of a principle that says any model of a physical process should give you the same qualitative behavior if you add a tiny, tiny, tiny perturbation to it. It shouldn't depend upon exact mathematical values. And the structure of x prime equals x squared does depend upon that one mathematical value of zero there. And therefore, it's not a good model for a physical process, which has to be somewhat robust under small perturbations. So the semi-stable equilibrium point is there just for technical completeness, but it's not going to play a big role in the modeling of systems in nature. So with that definition of equilibrium point, I want to start classifying all possible equilibrium points in 1D. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to start with a class of vector fields that is the super simplest class and is very, very important because it's going to help us understand everything. And I want to remind you of the definition of a linear function. And this is super important. A linear function, you recall the definition, uh, f, let's call it f of x, is linear if and only if number 1, f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y, and number 2, f of ax is equal to a f of x. Now this is the abstract definition of linear. You have to meet both of those clauses. But it's fairly easy to show, and we do in the text, that if this is really f of x and it is really linear, then there's really only two basic cases of linear functions in one dimension. If I assume that the constant k is greater than 0, then our two linear functions are f of x equals kx and f of x equals minus kx. And it's fairly easy to prove that it follows from the definition of linear that these are the only functions that can meet that definition. So we know all of the linear functions in 1D, they're either this or this for some k. And we know how these behave. If we now turn these into vector fields, this is x prime equals kx 
or x prime equals minus kx. And remember what those two vector fields look like. If this is state space, then x prime equals kx looks like this. And x prime equals minus kx looks like this. Because if x is positive, minus kx is negative. If x is negative, minus kx is positive. Here it's the opposite. If x is positive, x prime is positive. If x is negative, x prime is negative. So here are the two archetypes of linear vector fields in one dimension. And they give you either an unstable equilibrium point or a stable equilibrium point, depending upon the value of k.